coming near to the end now, I want to finish with a few questions about the relationship between tempo analysis and other techniques. Yeah. We talked a lot about Jonathan Smith and his interpretive yeah. analysis IPA approach um, and the similarities there and, and how that might be better suited to smaller numbers of cases and, and, and more kind of int uh, intensive studies. Um, and grounded theory, which is obviously the, the major approach that, that most people have heard of and, and, and maybe mm. in, referring to, which you're suggesting is, is better for larger scale studies perhaps, but also doesn't have the advantage of template analysis of, of having the template that's guiding you to begin with mm. that, that very often because you're having to dive into the data and construct it from, from scratch. But, but how do you relate template analysis to, to within that, that general context of other approaches? I'm thinking perhaps of, of approaches that don't use coding at all like some of the approaches in phenomenology, like Georgie and Georgie have, where you're yeah. rewriting in, 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 a, in some kind yeah. of phenomenological fashion. Yeah. I mean, how do you see what you're doing fitting with that? You, you, you are yourself have used phenomenological approaches in the past, yeah. haven't you? And uh, you've used this, this technique in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does it fit in with the other approaches? Is it, is it replace it or is it complement it? Or? Okay, I, I mean, I think it's probably easier to talk about the comparison with Georgie because mm. <coughs> template analysis can quite readily be used in a phenomenological sense. Uh, I think it's less easy to use it in a way that, 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 that is a kind of substitute for the techniques of discourse analysis or conversation analysis because they're concerned with what's being done in the language itself. Or, or, although there are some social constructionist thematic approaches mm. which, which it could be quite parallel to. So I think in, in Georgie, uh, I mean, the, I think the difference is, is kind of the philosophical origins. Um, I mean, template analysis, as I, as I may have said already, um, isn't wedded to one philosophical approach. I mean, it, it's a style of doing thematic analysis, a technique that can be used from a number of different perspectives. And cer certainly, I think you can have a phenomenologically oriented template analysis where you'll be much more focusing on the de on the bottom up than the top down elements within mm -hmm. the method um, and probably fairly small case numbers uh, and, a, and a lot more uh, sort of intensive analysis and certainly some some things that I've been involved in have been of that kind and, and really are very similar to what you'd get with IPA there's some differences in in just technique really and, it, and in s any almost habits of analysis. I, I, mm. I, for me, even when I have students using IPA, um, I, I, I sometimes give them my template stuff to, to read because they're getting stuck on the mechanics of thinking they only they can only have three levels of coding or two levels of coding. Oh, yes. And so sometimes, and, 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 they, and it works fine because actually if you use template analysis in a, in a phenomenological sort of way with small numbers, it looks very similar to IPA. But it also does a lot of other things. Uh, I think with, with Georgie, because it's so driven by the philosophy, it linked to a particular strand of phenomenology, really the, the original Husserlian brand, I, I, I think. Um, and, and as such, those ideas are really strongly kind of operationalized in the method. Uh, and Husserl is emphasizing, you know, this idea that if we can set aside our preconceptions, the phenomenologists use this technical term epoche and people often use the notion bracketing as meaning something yeah. fairly similar yeah. setting aside your taken for granted way of looking at the world as seeing it afresh you know you should be able to describe in, a, in this really rich deep way what the phenomenon is and for Husserl we need to do that as a foundation to all, all the sciences okay so the Husserlian phenomenological approach in, in, in Georgia and so on is very very focused on description and producing this very rich description and also focus on what's known as essence. You know, what is it that makes this phenomenon what it is? So actually, I mean, Georgie says, I was reading something recently, you know, he's not interested in the individual participants, he's interested in the phenomenon and describing the phenomenon and getting to the essence of that phenomenon. Okay, not, not in the variety of the life world of those people from whom the examples come to get at the yes. phenomenon. And as such, um, you know, it, it, it works in a very different way, I think, than, than, than template analysis because the template approach, like IPA, is picking up instances of what's important in people's 
everyday lived experience in relation to the topic that you're addressing. Uh, and I think for some, some phenomenologists who tend to be more of the transcendental, as it's sometimes called, and the Husserlian approach, uh, they would see thematic approaches as kind of taking too much of a shortcut. There, there's this notion called horizontalization, one of these yeah. almost unsayable words that you know, the jargon is full of, which means kind of treating all aspects of the, intera of, of the um, experience initially in our analysis is potentially of equal importance. So if we were analysing our interview here, you know, we would normally assume that the words that us two are saying are what's probably most important and maybe we look a bit at hand gestures and we don't bother, bother too much about what colour pen you've got or our haircuts. Mm. There might be good reason for not bothering about my haircuts, but you know, we take that for granted and we just focus in on that and a Husserlian approach would say, no, just look, try to describe everything that's there treat it as if it's all of potentially equal importance and then gradually through the processes that they that, that, that they recommend you begin to get to what is actually essential to it okay. now I think that, that that thematic approaches can do quite a lot of that as well they, they can be quite open to the, you know the, the, that which isn't is, is normally taken for granted. They, they they can if you use it flexibly, and if you don't get trapped into saying, "Right, well, I've done that stage. Now that's done." That's another reason why I, I quite like the fact that template analysis doesn't say we've done the descriptive stage. Now we're doing interpretation. It kind of allows you to go back and say, "Let's describe that a bit better," mm -hmm. or "Let's jump ahead to inter let's interpret this straight away because mm -hmm. this is really jumping out at me." So I think I, I think it can capture quite a lot of that, that that spirit of what Husserlian phenomenology tries to do, um, but but it's it, 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 I can't see a way I would use them side by side. I think George's method has a very particular goal in mind and very particular procedures, and in some respects does it really well. And, and when I've used it, one of the things I think it does well is it it makes you think about the, the philosophical ideas while you're doing the analysis. You can't just do it routinely without thinking about what you're doing, which you could do with template analysis or IPA. You know, you see it in student work. It's not very good work, but they can produce something from it. Mm. Um, wh wh whereas you've got to understand what you're doing with, with uh, um, the Georgie approach, as, you, as I guess you have with conversation analysis and discourse analysis. Mm. Mm. Um, but I suppose if I was pushed into a fight with a a Surlian phenomenologist about you know, what does your approach give to some, an some analysis, I'd say one of the things that sometimes I feel is you can go through a very long-winded thing with the Georgie type approach and in the end your conclusions aren't that much different than you would have got doing IPA or template analysis. It doesn't seem to... Now actually the experience might be different, you might have learned more from doing it, mm -hmm. but what you produce in terms of contribution to knowledge may not be that much deeper and richer. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I think that's something of an argument. Uh, but it sounds like you're also saying that, that this kind of template analysis approach isn't restricted to phenomenology or even to psychology, no. that it could be used in other disciplines, no, no. other subjects. And it, and it is. I mean, yeah. my, because I get quite a lot of emails in response to my websites, and I do keep them on file just because mm. yeah. it's an interesting record of the issues people have with it mm. uh, and where they come from. Um, I would say, and also looking at where things are published now using template approach, the biggest chunk of published work is in business and management, mm -hmm. and not all of it is by business and management psychologists by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a lot of health service based research, again, some of which is from a range of disciplines, not, not just health psychology. In fact, not health psychology much, because IPA has got a real grip on health psychology as, as a phenomenological approach and people will tend to turn to that. Right. So, so that is actually often the more practitioner oriented health service research uses template analysis. But I've got examples from educational research, examples uh, from clinical psychology, uh, a range of different disciplines. And I, and I think you know, that, that to me is, a, it, it is something that, that I value in it, uh, partly because I'm a pretty interdisciplinary minded psychologist. I, 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 I'm, I like working across disciplinary boundaries and I frequently work with colleagues who aren't psychologists. And so that, that also means that we're not hampered by having something that's so clearly a, a psychological method that's kind of setting limits to, to the way I work with colleagues from other disciplines. Right, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank Professor you. Thanks Thank for you.